All right, so let me just double check here. Things did not go particularly well, if I remember correctly, in this last scenario. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> we got smacked around. We did manage to get a couple of victory points, though. So before, uh, let's see, let's let's go ahead and get all this Scheisse von Kaisa out of here. Get these old cards out of my hand here. Yeah, as you can see, last game was pretty rough. Yeah, we uh we did not do particularly well. I think we took, uh, I think we took two trauma there. It was pretty brutal, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, we already have two of each trauma. We have two trauma from this, and then we um we did not manage to quell the anger of the spirits and then we died to an enemy attack so yeah that was pretty brutal um we do have three experience though so we can spend that we are enemies of the lodge of course uh because why wouldn't we be so let's let's go ahead and recall this crap let's get this out of here oh yeah Yeah, go away. Go away. Go away. Honestly, this is, yeah, not very elegant, but not that it really particularly matters on tabletop sim. Oh, blah, blah, now. Let's go ahead and place all this stuff for the secret name here. Uh, I don't think anything happens to the chaos bag. Uh, doesn't look it. Looks like the bag is set up correctly. Yeah. Because we, uh, took our fate. Oh, yeah, and then, then, and then this, we could potentially add some more, um, some more tokens to the bag, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that for now. This is a particularly long scenario, so buckle in, ladies and gents. Uh, let's go ahead and make a copy of this real quick. Let's go ahead and move to my uh, camera one. Actually, zoom that out a little bit so you can see that better. Let's go ahead and paste that over here. Actually, we're going to stay consistent today. Let's blow this up a little bit here. Just put those up there. I'm just going to kind of blow this up so it's easier to see on screen. There we go here. Uh, we're going to start an investigation phase. <laughs> we're three scenarios in, and I want to mind you that we have four trauma already. Mmm, my goodness. All right, so let's take a look here. We are not members of the Lodge. Oh, most certainly not. We are enemies of the Lodge, so we skip to intro four here. Yep, skip to intro four. After your confrontation with the president of the Silver Twilight Lodge, you traveled to the manor of the Arkham Historical Society in Southside. You are positive that the events you experienced in the woods last week have something to do with the creature that kidnapped those four unfortunate souls. It's just a hunch, a feeling that crawls along the back of your neck, imploring you to look away. But you're sure that everything is connected, just not sure how. As you enter one of the historical societies, ma many researchers greet you and... Mm, excuse me. Many researchers greets you... Oh... One of the historical society's many researchers greets you and asks if she can help you in any way. You give a cursory description of the information you're looking for, just enough that she can direct you where to look, but vague enough to leave your motives at the door. I don't know why you're researching such morbid affairs, but the records, but the records you are looking for should be in the library on the third floor, the researcher says. You thank her and head to the third floor where you begin to study the history of witchcraft in Arkham. In the late 17th century, Arkham was one of the New England towns caught up in the hysteria of the witch trials. Accusations of witchcraft spread like wildfire, and many of the accused were executed by hanging or burning, guilty and innocent alike. But there, but there was one witch whose infamy rose above the rest and whose mystical power has never been in question. 
Kasaya Mason. You recognize the name as the ghost who supposedly haunts the old witch house in French Hill. You had always thought of her to be a work of fiction, a tall tale meant to scare young children away from the condemned house. But the historical society's records indicate that Kasaya was a real person, a powerful witch who had fled from Salem over 200 years ago. You are no stranger to real witchcraft. If Kasaya Mason has anything to do with the coven you encountered in the woods, you must discover the connection. You leave the manor and head towards French Hill, with a, where the witch house awaits. And then we skip to setup. Do 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 do. All right, so we've gathered all the cards. We put the locations in the play. We have the unknown places in play at a random location. The cards are set aside, and the deck is created. And then that's just explaining the multi-class cards. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and shuffle our deck up. Go ahead and shuffle the on-counter deck. Lower that back down to zero. All right. Look for answers within and not without. Many paths lead to the same answer. Contemplate the greater truth. Each non-weakness enemy gets plus one health. That is a important thing to remember. After you defeat Brown Jenkins or Nahab, gain one clue from the token bank. When we arrive at the old witch house, you find it in a sorrier state than you could imagine. Surrounded by a crooked picket fence, the house looks as though it may fall apart at any minute. The front door is locked, but you're easily able to enter through one of the windows falling apart out of the after the f after pulling apart the rotten wooden boards covering the shattered glass, okay, I wish I could punch and roll on live Twitch. <laughs> so our objective is: if each un undefeated investigator is in Walter Gilman's room, investigators may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. So we need three clues, and we need to be in Walter Gilman's room, which is up here. I believe we start play here in the Moldy Halls, and there are three decrepit door locations in play here. And they're kind of just randomly spread around the board here. Four shroud, one clue, haunted, lose three resources. Gross. All right, so that's not even really worth a victory point. So we don't really need the clues. We need we need one clue in order to get up to Walter's room. That's and then these are the set aside locations here. All right. So I think that's everything we're gonna need for setup here. So let's go ahead and go into our opening hand here okay <laughs> where's the six cents we don't need this premonition we don't need this we don't need this and we don't need this this card has been not very useful i've i want it to be good because i want to have three spells in play but i really i'm pretty torn about this card Oh, I didn't even, uh, before we even draw our hand here, we, c we could actually uh, upgrade some cards in this deck. I, did, I didn't even spend any experience. So we could, um, it's probably going to be a pretty easy upgrade, honestly. We're probably just going to upgrade one of these uh, six senses. Uh, we could alternatively try to add something else, but I don't think that we want to. Um, let me just... I apologize for a second here. So I do already have all these cards laid, laid out here. Uh, I should have done this ahead of time. I apologize. So that would cost us two experience, which is pretty okay. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to make a copy of that real quick here. And then that's going to be our upgrade. Uh, it costs less experience because we have two copies of Arcane Research, which is why we have two mental trauma as well. So let's go ahead and do this real quick here. Take that out. Put this new guy in here. And that should, uh, we are all set to rock and roll here. Oh. Well, oops. There it goes. Okay. Let's rock and roll here. All right, so this is not a card. All right, we really could not have asked for a much better hand here. So let's let's just mulligan this water protection. 
and uh, this guts here, and let's draw two new cards. <laughs> okay, so all things considered, we really couldn't have asked for a much better hand here. Um, if you've watched the first two scenarios of this campaign, uh, it basically came down to whether or not I could draw these two cards fast enough. I live near an airport, in case that wasn't obvious enough. Sorry about that. Let's um, let's start our turn here. Let's let's play Uncage the Soul with our first action, and let's play um, let's play Six Sense. So that's going to be for free. Let's second action. Let's get this shriveling on the board. All right, we have the two most important assets in play. This should be good. This comes into play with five charges. I don't know why they didn't spawn on there. That was weird. Three, four, and five. It's probably because um, I just replayed the deck. Comes into play with an extra charge because of a catch's ability. And then we have one action left, which we could use to investigate. That would be a four versus uh, five currently. This doesn't give us a boost. Only the other one does. Let's just double check that here. And we'd lose a bunch of money if we investigated here. I don't really want to move. One of these spawns a rat, I believe. So that's not really worth um it's not really worth moving on your last action. So I mean we're probably reasonably not even gonna play that. So so I think what I'm gonna do with my last action is I am going to investigate. That's gonna be a five versus four, and then we'll go ahead and commit this guts for a plus two. So that's gonna be five, six, seven uh, versus four here. Chaos pick says minus two, which is a pass. So we'll go ahead and get this clue. And we will draw a card. Nice. Alright, so not bad. We're we're doing pretty good here, and a holy rosary off that draw was pretty nice too. Let's move into enemy phase here, which there are none, and then we'll go right into upkeep where we will gain a resource and draw a card. I have water protection, that's a pretty good draw. Let's gain our actions back here. Let's go into turn two, and it's gonna be mythos phase. Oops. We'll go ahead and add a doom here. So one doom of four, and we draw an encounter card of bro wow. Alright, so each ready creature, including himself, gets plus two fight. So he's a 3-1-4 currently. He's aloof. Hunter, forest, when the enemy face ends of brown chicken is ready, each investigator has a location, discards their hand, and draws them any cards. Or as Vase would like to call it, the Patrice mechanic. Alright, so he's aloof and hunter, so we'd have to spend our entire turn to um fight and engage and fight him pretty much. So alternatively we could just move. I'm pretty okay with um, with doing that. So let's let's first action. Let's play Holy Rosary. First things first, and then let's use our second action here. And I'm going to move into this bottom to prep a door location. Ooh, we're in Frank Elwood's room. Three shroud, one clue. Haunted. You must either place one of your clues in the room or place a doom on the current agenda. This goes here. Okay, that's that's not that bad. Uh, we're currently at a six willpower versus a three. Let's go ahead and spend our last action to investigate. Uh, that's going to be a six. That's five plus one uh, versus the shroud of three. Chaos bag says a skull, which is currently a minus one, and it's a minus three if we're in an extra dimensional location. So we nab another clue. Very nice. All right, enemy phase here. Uh, stuff actually happens. We have Brown Jake in at play here. He is aloof and hunter. And then when the enemy phase ends, if he's ready, each investigator has a location, discards their hand, and draws them any cards. So let's go ahead and discard our hand. And we'll go ahead and draw two cards here. Ugh. Angered spirits, gross. So that's unfortunate. So when it comes into play, it goes into the play in threat area, and then you can ex exhaust a spell asset to move a charge onto it. And then when the game ends, if there's fewer than four charges on it, you suffer a physical trauma. I don't like seeing this card all the time. That's really quite quite awful. Um, 
so that was enemy phase. Let's go ahead and move into upkeep or gain a resource and draw a card. Premonition. Okay. Um we might we might do this at some point. Not not positive as of yet. We might have to unfortunately give all the charges to this. But we'll we'll see. Let's let's go ahead and uh we're on turn three here. Yes, turn three. Let's go ahead and add a doom. Two doom of four. We draw a bedeviled. Put it into play in your threat area. You cannot trigger action abilities on cards you control. Test willpower three. If you succeed, discard it. Otherwise, uh, you can evade a witch enemy and uh, succeed it automatically. Let's. That was mythos phase. Let's go into investigation phase here with three actions. Let's spend our first action to get rid of this stupid thing. That's going to be a three versus six. I think I'm going to hold on to this premonition for now. Let's test three versus six. Chaos Bex says zero. Very nice. We get rid of this. Uh, Brown Jenkin is at our location. So let's spend our second action to move. We move back into the moldy halls. And then let's go ahead and spend another action to move into this decrepit doorway. We are going to end our turn but fortunately, we end it in Joe's room, which has an action to search your deck for a blessed or item asset and add it to your hand. Three shroud, one clue, and it has a haunted effect that says you must either take a horror or choose choose and, choose and discard an asset you control. All right. Well, that's not the end of the world here. Um, let's, let's go ahead and move into enemy phase here, where Brown Jenkin will move into the moldy halls. And then we will move into upkeep phase here. I'll gain a resource and draw a card. Draw six cents. Draw a good six cents. That gives us plus two to our investigation. Not not bad, not bad. So could be could be worse. We could be uh could be in a worse position. Let's let's go into turn four. Uh mythos phase, we're gonna have a three doom of four. The agenda will be advancing next turn. And then we'll draw our encounter card, and we draw a Racked. Uh, so it goes into play in your threat area. You get minus one to each of your skills during the first skill test you perform, and then it has an action that test willpower three, and you can discard it. And then uh, the same with all the other hexes in this cycle is that you can, you can evade a witch and then um, succeed automatically. But fortunately, with a high power or high willpower mystic such as Akachi, these tests are fairly trivial. So let's move into investigation phase. Uh, this would be at a five. Yeah. Um, not really worth premonitioning, I don't think. Let's, um, we're not gonna fight anything. So I think I'm gonna do this for first. We'll do that. I'm going to move a charge onto it. I am going to try to get rid of this. I don't want to suffer too much trauma, especially this early on. Because, yeah, I don't think there will be any way we get before the black get to before the black throne if we uh we take too much trauma early on. Some of the later scenarios in this campaign are very difficult in solo play. All right, so we have we still have three actions. Could do this at a minus 2. Yeah, I don't mind that. Let's let's do this first. Uh, that's going to be three versus five. Chaos Week says a skull, which is a minus one, so we pass. Get rid of this. Uh, we could attempt to investigate here. We could try to get an item. Uh, I don't hate investigating. We'd be at a three versus six. Yeah, let's investigate. Second action, three versus six. Chaos Week says. A minus three, we pass with the exacties. Love it. Love it. Nice. All right. We have most of the clues that we need, and we have one action left. Um, we're not going to play any of these cards in our hand, at least for the time being. Let's... I mean, Brown Dragon's going to get on us anyway. We're going to discard those cards in our hand. Um, yeah. Let's just let's just go ahead and move. It is what it is. So enemy phase, uh, Brown Jenkin will cause us to discard our hand. This is currently that. So we will discard these three cards, and they will draw a fresh new hand of three cards. Okay, Renfield is nice. Uh, 
Holy Rosary, not so much. Uh, Ritual Candles is also kind of nice. Let's let's go into upkeep here. I'll gain a resource, and I will draw a card. Get our actions back, and then we'll go into turn five. Get a second copy of Renfield. Why? Game has been quite brutal to me today. Let's let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and advance here. As you explore the old dilapidated house, the telltale scratching and scurrying in the walls becomes louder and more frequent. Every now and again, a fanged furry creature darts across the wooden floor, scampering in and out of rat holes in the walls. You wonder if these are. You wonder if this house is more rat than wood. If Brown Jenkin is already in, if Brown Jenkin is in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a swarm of rats and spawn it at Brown Jenkin's location. If Brown Jenkin is not in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for him and spawn him at the lead investigator's location. And then additionally, if there are more than uh, three inv three or more investigators in the game, blah 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 blah. Okay. So, each weakness non weakness enemy now has plus two health, and then uh, it has the same reaction ability that after you defeat Brown Jenkin or Nahab, you gain a clue from the token bank. All right, so let's go ahead and get get swarmy here. Go ahead and put that in our hand for now, and then let's uh, draw our encounter card. So this has three health. It's important to keep that in mind. Disquieting Dreams, Revelation, Testable Power 5. If you fail, put it into your threat area. At the end of the turn, discard the top card of the encounter deck. When the encounter deck runs out of cards, discard it. Reveal the top 10 cards of your deck. Draw each weakness and discard each other revealed card. Um, Gross. Well, fortunately, we have an icon we can pitch. So I don't mind losing this. Because we already have one in play. So that's going to be a 6, 7 versus 5 here. And this should have read it as well. I apologize. Uh, 5 versus 7, Chaos Mix says. A skull, which is currently a minus 1. So, haha. -ha. We got there. Very nice. All right. So our first action is going to have to be to deal with this thing. Um, it doesn't have additional fights. So we could punch. We could punch with our first action. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, it just has additional health. So let's use our first action to fight. 3v1. Caswick says. Minus 2. Very nice. And then we're going to use our second action here. And then we'll use a charge of shriveling. And then that's going to be a 1 versus 6 here. Uh, what, sorry, one versus eight here. Uh, Chaos Spike says, <laughs> "Of course it does. <sighs> of course it does." You were being so nice to me earlier. Why? Why do you have to be like this? Okay, let's <laughs> spend a second charge of shriveling and let's just eight versus one again. Wow, are you <laughs> kidding me? What the fuck? Why? Why does this game hate me? This game hates Akachi. <laughs> no. Okay, what the hell, man? So enemy phase, we're going to get bonked for a damage because of the swarm of rats. At the end of the enemy phase, we're going to have to discard this hand. Uh, I believe Br whoops. Brown Jenkin is still at our location here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, draw three new cards. We draw Right of Seeking, we draw Cash, and we draw Unexpected Courage. All right. Upkeep. Resource. Card. Unexpected Courage. Turn six. Man, these brats are just pummeling the ever <laughs> We were able to punch them more efficiently than we were able to shrivel them. I... It's fine. Maybe I should just put Enchanted Blade in this deck. So let's uh, let's add a Doom here. One Doom of six. Encounter card is a Racked. Of course it is. So we get a minus one to the skills that we perform. So let's, uh, I'm going to actually take this turn kind of like how Patrice would. We're going to use our first action to punch. That's going to be a 5, minus 1, 4, versus 1 here. Chaos Mix says, Newman, don't fail me now. Minus 1, 
Alright. He takes the damage. Second action. Unexpected courage. Fight again. That's going to be a 5 versus 1. Chaos Bag says. Yes, Skull. Haha. -ha. Oh my god, and we're supposed to take two horror from that as well, so that's a thing, because we drew two auto fails. I hate my life. I really, I, I hate my life. Alright, this guy finally dies. After punching it to death with five actions, mind you. Let's use our last action to get rid of this stupid thing. That's going to be six versus three. Newman, take the wheel, he says. Plus one. Alright. That was our turn. Enemy phase, Brown Jenkin happens. We'll discard those. We'll draw two new cards. We draw Wither and a Water Protection. We'll go into upkeep. I'll gain a resource and draw another card. Spirit Speaker. Nice. That's actually pretty useful. Yeah, that's actually pretty useful. Because hopefully we can we can feed the uh, we can feed the angered spirits with this card. So let's let's go ahead and go into Mythos phase of turn seven here. Let's get our actions back. Let's add a Doom. We're at two Doom of six. Centuries of Secrets. Test will power five. For each point you fail by, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If a cursed treachery is discarded by this effect, deal one direct damage to your investigator and to each of your ally assets. We are currently at a six willpower. We could just ward it. Um, alternatively, if we didn't want to take damage, we could take horror, which I don't mind because we're going to have to discard this hand pretty probably anyway. So let's let's just go ahead and ward this. I'm going to spend a resource. We're going to ward it. I'll take a horror. That's fine. We'll ward this. Let's move into investigation phase. Let's spend our first action. We're going to play Spirit Speaker, which is handy here. Uh, so we can exhaust it. We can choose an asset we control with charges. We can either return that asset to our hand or move all uh, charges into our resource pool. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to we're going to do this. Use a fast action to put that there. Then we're going to use this fast action to return this to my hand. And then I'm going to use my second action to replay the shriveling. And that comes into play with five charges. Oops. There we go. Okay, so we're getting there. We're, we are slowly feeding the angered spirits. And now that we have that all set, we can we can try to move into this location, but I think that's the one that spawns the rat. So I think I want to hold off for now. Um, we could gain a resource. That's not the end of the world. Let's let's just do that. Let's gain a resource. And then enemy phase, um, Brown Jenkin will make us discard a card and draw a card. We draw our guts. We'll move into upkeep, where I will draw another card and gain a resource and ready all of my stuff here. We draw a premonition. Okay, it's pretty good. We might have to just go into the room at this point. We might have, I thought there was victory points to be had. I feel like I've just been wasting a lot of my time. Uh, let's go ahead and add a doom. We're at three doom of six. Realm of torment. Oh, this is the one that, yeah. So you put it into play in your threat area. Resolve the haunted ability each turn, and then when your turn ends, you can test Will Power 3. That I, this card is awful. I hate it. I hate this card, and I hate the other card that's in this encounter set. The one that surges and makes you resolve haunted. I can't tell you how many times I've died to this card, but it's... I hate it. I, <laughs> I hate it. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the board here. So we would need one clue to move into here. I currently have three clues. We need three clues to move into here. Um, I don't know if this has victory points or not. I really don't remember. Um, either way, like either way, Brown Jenkins gonna he's gonna move in. Uh, oh, crap baskets. <laughs> I forgot about this. I forgot Brown Jenkin pumps up the enemies. God damn it. 
<laughs> uh, crap. I don't think it would have mattered. I think I still, I still would have passed all three of those tests, weirdly enough, because I auto failed two of them. It's fine. It's fine. Um. Hmm. Yeah. So we have to resolve the haunted ability. So we have to lose all our resources because of this. And then let's. Um. I'm gonna spend my first action to move. Yeah, so after you reveal it, you search the encounter deck and discard pile for a swarm of rats, and you spawn it here, and then haunted it. Uh, it does that that nonsense. Uh, so I'm going to search the discard pile for this swarm of rats, and then we're gonna go ahead and do this. And then second action, let's go ahead and pop charge of shriveling. Uh, that's going to be a one versus uh, eight here. Chaos Spike says a zero. Very cool. He takes two damage. And then we will um, let's go ahead and use our final action to punch. That is going to be, let's see here, um, uh, three versus one. Brown Jenkin is not at our location. Oh, I don't think it matters, actually. In that case, um, hmm. I think in that case, we're just going to have to use a second charge of shriveling. All right, so eight versus three, Chaos Mike says, minus two. Haha. -ha. It only took us four charges of shriveling, but we did it, boys. All right, uh, end of our turn, we get to do this. So that's going to be willpower three versus six, Chaos Mike says. Tentacle, minus three, which we do not fail. So this gets discarded. We will move into enemy phase. Brown Jenkin will move. We will have to discard these two cards. And then we'll have to draw two new ones. We draw a Drawn of the Flame and a Deny Existence. And then that is our turn. We'll go ahead and move into upkeep phase where I'll gain a resource. Draw a card. Ooh. Second shriveling. Uh, not the end of the world. Let's go into Mythos phase here of turn nine. Let's add a doom for doom of six. Diabolic voices. Test willpower three. For each point you fail by, discard a random card for your hand. For each card you cannot discard, take a horror or a damage. And then it has plus one difficulty for each copy of this in the discard pile, which I don't think there are any. There is not. So let's just test willpower three versus six. Chaos Bike says minus one. We pass. All right. So let's. We could investigate with our first action. So we're going to do that. Uh, that's going to be a. I believe that is a two shroud location that we are currently on. It is. It's going to be a two versus six here. Chaos Bike says plus one. Haha. -ha. We get a clue. We're going to use our second action to move. And then I believe we're going to use our third action to move here and spend a clue. S Walter Gilman's room is a four shroud, one clue location. It has an action that says draw a card and take a horror. Limit once per game. Discard the top two cards of the encounter deck as its haunted ability. Um, do we want to? Yeah, we want to do this. Let's... Let's exhaust this. Let's put a charge here. So we're slowly, we're slowly building this up. So this this combination of shriveling and uh, spirit speaker is pretty sweet, though I will say. Uh, yeah. Was uh was that everything of my turn? I think it was. Uh, enemy phase. Let's move Brown Jenkin. Let's go ahead and move into upkeep. We will spend this clue. Uh, let me just double check here. It doesn't say at the end of the round. It just says if each unde undefeated investigator is there. So we're gonna actually advance uh, after Mythos phase. Okay. 
Uh, let's move into Mythos phase. Speaking of which, uh, I did not draw a card. Did I draw a card? I did. Okay. Yeah, we drew that second sick copy of Shriveling. My goodness, I am losing all sense of time and space. Oof. Gross. Another one. That's not fun. Investigation phase here. Hmm. We could double shrivel. Oh no. Um, I did mess up keep because Brown Jenkin, Brown Jenkin wasn't even at my location. So yeah, I did. I did completely mess up keep. Okay. Not that it really particularly matters, but I should keep better track of that stuff. Okay. So we have three actions of our turn. We have a swarm of rats. Um, I think if we advance, it just goes away. So let's let's start by doing that. Let's spend three clues to advance. Standing in a dead man's room is disconcerting enough. But what you find within is enough to make you want to leave and never return. Walter Gilman's journal is filled with descriptions of his dreams and visions, each more terrifying and perplexing than the last. He mentions seeing the figure of Kasaya Mason on more than one occasion, and points, and at one point calls her out by name, Nahab. As soon as you read the name aloud, the nearby window shatters and an all-too-familiar spectral mist invades the cramped space. When it recedes, everything about the room has changed. A work desk and an aged bookshelf occupy the far corner of Gilman's room, where his bed should be. The door you entered from is gone, strange geometrical markings drawn with a red sticky substance all over the walls. Swap uh, Walter Gilman's room with the set-aside Kasaya Masons. Uh, all tokens and cards are now at the new location. Okay. Uh, remove each other location in play from the game, and then choose an investigator to take control of the black book asset. And then shuffle each of the strange geometry cards in the encounter deck. Alright, well, let's just do this. So strange geometry, these get... Oops. These get uh, shuffled into the encounter deck. It's Kasai's room, right? Yes. Oops. This goes here. And then each other location and then the black book. Okay. And then all of these locations go hub bye bye. So I'm assuming Brown Jenkin also goes bye-bye. So we are now in Kasaya's room. Three shrouds, zero clues. After you successfully investigate Kasaya's room, instead of discovering clues, put the top card of the Unknown Places deck into play unrevealed. Then you may move to that location. Haunted, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a hex is discovered and you draw that card. So that's pretty much the whole premise of this pointless scenario. Is now that now that we're in, we're in the other uh, spectral dimension. We're now supposed to uh, go through these unknown unknown dimensions and uh, discover the clues that we need. So let's. Uh, so we need five clues. Holy jeebus! Among the books in this strange room is a black, nameless tome inscribed with dry red blood. It matches a description from Walter Gilman's journal of a tome he names the Black Book. This room must be the haunt of Kasaya Mason from over 200 years ago. It is rumored that Kasaya had discovered deep mathematical truths that allowed her to traverse space and time. Yeah, right. Perhaps you can find a way out by using this knowledge. Well, hopefully. We'll see. We shall see indeed. All right, we have three actions. We have a stupid swarm of rats, and we have this black book. Which is very helpful. You get plus one uh, willpower and plus one intellect. When you play a card, exhaust the black book and take X horror and reduce that card's cost by X. So, 
let's um we have to deal with this stupid swarm of rats um hmm I'm going to first action shrivel the rats at three or no now it's just a one so actually now we can pretty safely punch it too so yeah I'm gonna test um that's gonna be eight versus one here chaos Mike says a minus two he will take two damage and then we will punch three versus one I do not want to add any other uh don't want to commit anything, so it's just going to be three versus one. And of course, we fail. That was our second action. And then third action, let's try to punch it again. Three versus one. Yes. All right. Nice. So he goes, oh, bye bye now. And then that was our turn. And enemy phase, nothing happens. So we'll go ahead and move into upkeep here. Or I'll gain a resource, draw a card. Draw a right of seeking. We have four cards left in the deck, so we are going to have to take a horror pretty soon here. Um, so, yeah, that was my turn. Probably should have done that at the end of the turn, but that's okay. Not that it really makes too much of a difference. Um, so we'll move into Mythos phase. Turn 10 here. Let's add a Doom. We're at five Doom of six now. And then we'll go ahead and draw our, our encounter card. Extra dimensional visions. Test willpower two. Uh, this test gets plus one difficulty for every ten cards in the encounter discard pile if you fail discard an asset. Okay, let's take a quick look at how much. So there's nine cards. Oops, sorry, there should be ten cards. So there is ten cards, so that is a willpower three test. Uh yep. Yeah. So willpower three versus six. Let's um oh, I'm gonna need these. So let's let's just test three versus six. All right, very nice. Uh, so we just pass. That'll go away. Actually, we're at a seven, which is pretty sweet. So let's um, let's uh, let's do some shenanigans here. Let's exhaust this to move this charge here. So now that we're we've quelled the angered spirits, let's exhaust this to return this to my hand. And then let's spend our first action again to play this shriveling. Oops. So we have five charges on our shriveling now. And we're looking pretty good here. Uh yeah, let's investigate. Let's let's use this second action. Investigate. That's gonna be a six seven versus three here. Uh we are because what we are at Kasai Mason's room. Uh yep. It doesn't say how we investigate, just says that we have to successfully investigate. So let's investigate seven versus three. Newman says minus three, haha. -ha. We discover nothing, but we do uh draw. Let's go ahead and give this a quick shuffle. I'll draw this. All right. So that was that. Let's go ahead and move as our last action. Salem Gal, 1692. It has three shroud, one clue. It has a action that says test intellect three. If you succeed, re uh, move to any revealed location. And then it has a haunted effect that says move to Kasaya's room. And we need a bunch of clues, so so that's a thing. Um, so we're in Mythos phase, correct? Uh, no, we moved. So we'd move into enemy phase, which there are no enemies, and then we'd move into upkeep. So upkeep, gain resource, draw a card here. Draw ritual candles. One, two, three, four, five, six cards in hand. Three actions. uh let's go ahead and add a doom and draw our encounter card Ooh, that's right uh turn 11 should be this will go up to six and it will advance a dizzying violent light emerges from the crevices of the ramshackle house behind cracks in the wooden paneling and underneath the floor bathing from every angle an inhuman squeal mocks you as you 
as a figure emerges from the witch light. Only a hint of humanity remains in her crooked and broken form. The cone crackles. The crone crackles with a nightmarish timber, her voice echoing and resounding from the realm beyond. If it is Act 1, you spawn Nahab in Walter Gilman's room. If it's Act 2, you spawn him in Kasaya's room. And if it's Act 3, you place a doom on Nahab. So we spawn Nahab in Kasaya's room. And then find a brown Jenkin and place him in the hop's location. Oops, that was not what I wanted to do. And then these go here. So Nahab is a 113 hunter retaliate. Uh, you do not remove Doom from Nahab when the agenda advances. Nahab gets plus X fight, where X is the number. Uh, X is the number of the current agenda, and then forced after the enemy phase begins. If Nahab is ready, you place a doom on her. So things are going to get whole oh boy real fast here. All right, and then we did that, and then that was all that stuff here. So uh, each non-weakness enemy gets plus three health, so she really has four health. And then after you defeat Brown, Jenkins, and Nahab, you gain a clue from the token bank. Two clues instead if there are three or more investigators in the game. And we have uh, not a lot of time left to work with. We we need a bunch of clues. Um, yeah, because it was, it was uh, play shriveling, escape move. All right, so let's draw our encounter card. Centuries of Secrets. We have a willpower currently of seven. Seven versus five. Let's just test it straight up here. Don't need to commit anything, I don't think, so let's just test. And we draw an auto fail, of course. So, blah, blah, blah. So we have to discard the top five cards in the encounter deck. Let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, I believe it's a curse, and five. Uh, we, which we did, so we have to take a direct damage. Uh, we'll just take... Well, that stinks. Um, we don't have any allies, so that is what it is. Um, let's go ahead and move into investigation phase here. Let's investigate with our first action. Uh, we, are, we are currently here, and it is a three shroud. Uh, one clue location. So that's going to be three versus uh, seven. Three, five, six, and seven versus three. We draw an elder sign, very nice. So we can add a charge to an asset. Let's go ahead and add a charge to our shriveling. That shriveling has been most useful. Very nice, so we succeed, we get a clue. Oops, keep pushing the wrong camera button, my apologies. All right, we are 20% there. Let's use our second action here. Let's go ahead and move. I'm definitely gonna take a horror. Alternatively, we could play ritual candles. I don't hate that. Let's let's spend our resource to play ritual candles. So we're, we're gonna lose all of our stuff anyway, actually. Nahab hunts, right? Or yeah, Nahab hunts. So let's actually, um, hmm. I don't think we, I don't think we can reasonably evade Nahab. We'd have to get pretty lucky, I think. Yeah. She has so much health. It's crazy. Um, yeah, let's, um, we could deny existence the horror. And we still take a damage. It's like neither of those is great. Um, hmm. Each ready creature, and she's not a creature, thankfully. Okay. Um, sorry. We're gonna just move, and I'm gonna just try to try to bonk Nahab here. So Nahab currently is a one four. Because uh, of the agenda, she has plus three health. 
So she's a one four three currently. Uh, we could punch, but I think it's I think it's pretty worth it to use a charge of shriveling. So it's gonna be eight versus one. Chaos Bike says, "Why? Why does the bag hate me today? Why does the bag hate me?" Well, that was our last action. As we moved and uh, used shriveling, so. So enemy phase, she's going to bonk us, so we'll uh, soak the two uh, horror, take a damage, my goodness. And then uh, Brown Jenkin is at our location, so we're going to have to discard one, two, three, four, five cards. We'll draw these. Uh, I'm assuming you draw them all at the same time, so and then I have to take our draw two more cards here and then we'll keep we'll have to keep this deny existence because we can't take more damage all right so that was a uh, brown jink and resolving during the enemy phase and then I, I took a damage so we'll gain a resource and draw a card during upkeep we draw right seeking all right uh yeah yeah uh, so yeah, let's add a doom. One doom of eight. Oh, yeah, she's supposed to have a doom too. We'll place a doom on her. So we're a two doom of eight. I, I was telling you, I, I was telling you, I hate this card, and I still hate it. I I still hate it. So let's uh, let's resolve that stupid haunted ability. So we discard cards. Till we draw a hex. It's a terror. It's a curse. That's an enemy. That's a terror. That's a hex. Pulled from the stars. So you put it into play in your threat area at the end of your turn. If you did not move at least once during your turn, you take two horror. It has an action that says test willpower three. If you succeed, discard pulled from the stars. And then this stupid thing surges. Ay ay ay. So we cannot trigger actions on cards we control. So we can't trivel her anymore. So we have to move and we can't trivel and we have a terrible evade. That sounds about right. Okay. Uh, that was Mythos phase. Let's go into investigation phase here. Ay ay ay. I think I should be at six horror, actually. Yeah, I should be at six. Okay, so Nahab kills us. Either way, so this sucks. We we die to pull from the stars if we can't move. So crap. <laughs> Uh, crap. Oh, Christ. Um, how do we get out of this? I think we, we have to try to fight her. We, because we could, we could kill her and then, um, we could move and then not deal with this. So I think that's, that's going to have to be our plan here. Um, she gets plus X, oh jeez, yeah, she gets plus X fight, so she gets plus three fight, so she's a four, four, three enemy currently. Oh, crap, baskets, all right. Uh, first action, shrivel, that's gonna be a eight versus, so it's, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sorry, nine versus four. Caspic says, minus two. Aha, let's run it back. Second action. Ah, yes. All right, so Nahab takes four damage and is defeated. Oops, let's take Nahab. Let's put Nahab over here for now. Into the discard pile. And then we defeated Nahab, so we get a clue from the token bank. Yeah, two-fifths of the way there. Slow but steady progress. All right, so we have to move, unfortunately. 
so we're gonna have to oh my god i can't activate shriveling that's right i'm really stupid so i couldn't even do that well let's uh never mind that's right i forgot about that so nahab would still be in play and i'd have to punch nahab for four versus three that would not work yeah yep i yeah i don't think there's any way i live through that unfortunately i have just been getting pounded today three auto fails it was so brutal so brutal yeah i think we we would just straight up die here nahab would still have a doom on her um yeah i yeah because we can't we can't uh we can't shrivel because of this we can't um if we don't move we die and we can't deal too damage with our fists so so like the only the only chance we have is to evade we have to just like straight up pass an evade test and then move mm. alternatively we could use this deny existence on this um let's let's just try to evade though so three versus three here chaos fixes <laughs> of course it is oh and she has she has retaliate i'm wow so yeah when i drew that i i'm actually dead like i actually died because i should have when i failed that first shriveling last turn i should have taken an attack of opportunity whoopsie all right so turn 12 akachi died <laughs> um we earned nothing that was absolutely brutal so yeah so we died um flashes of uh, flashes of vision spark your memory as you are dragged along the dirty wooden floor a foul seminar a foul ceremony the house nahab a rhythmic chant the spiraling black vortex a dark revelry the primal chaos a child's cries a writhing tunnel inside your chest proceed to resolution one you awaken in the muddy lawn at the base of some crooked wooden steps, the front door of the witch house looming above you. Every fiber of your being is filled with regret. You know that you have failed to prevent something awful, though you're not, ex you're not exactly sure what. The evidence of your eyes and ears suggests what you saw inside the witch house was, no concurrent w was not concurrent with here and now. Regardless, you've learned several things about Kasaya Mason. The witch who had once inhabited this old forsaken house. With your spirit diminished and your body aching, this information will have to suffice. You dare not venture back into this infernal house. Uh, yeah, so we earn nothing. <laughs> uh, it was Act 3, I believe. Act 2. Yeah, so it was Act 2. If it was Act Two, uh, we just we record uh, Gilman's journal, and we earn the Black Book as a story asset, and then we add a skull to the bag. This this really couldn't have gone like any worse i i don't know what the hell happened there but this scenario always kicks my ass man i i don't even think in the solo runs i've done of it i've even beaten it i i just i think it's too difficult that's just like you have to get so many clues and for so many of the investigators it's so hard to do you need like eight i think yeah so it's crazy and then there's a whole nother act you have to do. So let's see, we're, so we add that and then if it's act three, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I think that's that's all the resolution, yep. Ugh, man, that was, uh, that was something else.
Like that was that was ugh, that was just brutal. I don't I don't even know. Ay ay ay. Oh goodness. Um yeah, that was that was quite rough. I I just I don't know. <laughs> um yeah, so could have could have been better, but could have also uh been no, actually it couldn't have been worse. And the secret name is not gonna not gonna be any better, I don't think. This has just been an absolute slapping of a campaign so far. Um even, so so the first two games that we've had of this campaign, it was either we we spent uh the first the the witching hour we spent like six or seven turns just digging through the deck so that we could find um we could find six cents and that just that just took us too long to where we couldn't we couldn't get all the victory points that we wanted to get and then at death's doorstep we couldn't find a shriveling to save our life so we couldn't even we couldn't kill any of the enemies and then we just got bogged down with the spectral watcher and two of the other uh spectral enemies and in this scenario we we uh we got both of the um both of the assets that we wanted but it was three auto fails drawing drawing against those uh swarm of rats was just brutal it took three horror there and then we had two trauma so that was already five horror right there and then we had two physical trauma going into the scenario like what the hell man what the hell Oh my goodness! But uh, yeah. Thanks everyone for watching today. Uh, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen with the next couple of scenarios, but um, hopefully they fare better. Hopefully they fare better. But until next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. But uh, have a